it's struggling a bit. So at the moment, it's ready to start it out with the boost pipes on. In the last video, I got the dump pipes on the bobber. In this video, I'm gonna get the oil pipes on, get the oil feed working, and we are gonna start it up. And that's gonna give me a much better idea of if this is gonna work, sorry, that's gonna give me a much better idea of how this is gonna work. I'm confident it's gonna be pretty good. So I'm going for it. And I'm also actually charging ahead with some steps which I'm not quite ready for. Well, I am ready for them. I just need a bit more TIG welding skill to make a nice job of it, that's all. But I'm gonna do it anyway, because it's gonna give me practice. So <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Because that's what this channel's about. It's about inspiring people to have a go with the resources they have. So we are gonna get it started today. I'm not gonna be able to ride it, because I've gotta do, I've gotta fix the clutch arm I've broke, and the weather it's raining so that's going to have to wait till next week so make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell icon so you get notified when the video comes out and also like this video and comment on it and of course share the video it really helps me and the channel grow right <laughs> let's crack on with it then right this is the oil drain for the left hand turbo and this is the pipe coming out the oil drain for right hand turbo so i've got to get them to both go in the crankcase there and I've got some AN fittings which will fit this hose and I intend to get that on there like that so basically I've just got to weld that AN fitting onto the case there and drill a hole through it and then that will drain into there and put a T-piece in between the hoses which I don't have at the moment but I have got a hose a half inch hose adapter from Bunnings which will do for now. So this is off my spare engine, I've just used the wire brush to clean the metal down there and I've got to get that guy on there like that. I've just ground that down a bit so it's got a little bit of a curve on it. I've drilled a 12mm hole in the case so that I can hold it all together and I think that will help as a heat sink as well. So doesn't get too hot and melt it which it might well do with me welding this is the first time I've ever done this right let's go oh actually no I do need to do I'll heat it up a bit A damn fine piece of welding. Well, it's not actually. It's really, really difficult because they're two different thicknesses and this was well melting way quicker than this and I got a little bit scared. But I'll get a hang of it one day. I really want to take a course, but time at the moment is a problem for that. Right, <laughs> I've got that welded in there, which was a pain in the bum because I'm still learning and but I figured I may as well actually practice doing this rather than just spending months and months practicing and actually never getting anything done. Um, so, <laughs> I've buggered up. I've managed to weld that in a place where it's right behind the exhaust. And I really wanted to get this running today. I can't drive it because I've also broken the clutch um, putting this case back on, which is quite a common thing for me to do. But I really wanted to get it running, but that's all right. I've got a plan, we're gonna get it running. Oh. 
There, that's the answer for now. Okay, I've been busy today. I have had a few setbacks because I really wanted to start it up, give it its first start up, but I <laughs> had a few things stopping me from doing that. Um, the exhaust for one thing, but that's not a problem because I've chopped it off, so I've just got to dump pipes now. I've actually got some conventional coils rigged up because I'm fed up of the crappy Triumph ones and I want to use a proper HT lead, so I've done that. I've got my oil drain made. This is all temporary, this is just breather hose, but there's no point actually spending money on proper speed flow hose until I know this is all going to work. I did actually have to spend money on the oil inlets because I wanted the proper ones for the turbo because they've got a restrictor in there so it's got the right amount of oil going to the bearing so that you don't actually over oil it and lose oil pressure from the engine. I've got my oil feed rigged up. These are the braided lines from the kit which I'll probably use. This line here I haven't actually managed to sort out properly yet. This is borrowed off of a oil pressure gauge so there's a quick release there. So this is just all to get it going at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the oil drain there and I'm going to spin it over without spark plugs in it and hopefully oil dribbles out the bottom. Then once that's in, I'm going to, um, I can start it up, but I don't really want to start it up without the boost hoses connected because I don't really want to risk turbo spinning up too quick. I don't know if that will happen or not, but <coughs> you never know. I'm not sure about is if there's back pressure from the oil breather actually blowing that back up but I don't think it will happen like that because I think the oil pressure from here is enough to overcome that. This is something we're going to have to find out. So I think what I'm going to do now is actually make the flanges here so I can actually connect these boost hoses up and then we're going to start it up. I'm going to start it up because it's not going to be under load, so turbos aren't going to be sort of spooling up. So I'm going to give it a go. just knocked up these little turbocharger outlets for my boost pipes. That one there I made out of steel because I had the flange in the flange kit and I only had one of them because I only bought one flange kit if you remember and I copied it and made an aluminium one for the other one which isn't really man enough for this job but it will do for now because this is only a prototype and if this works which I'm really hoping it does I can make all this again nicely. Probably out of aluminium because that is so much lighter than that, but I'll make that thicker.
Right, let's try that again. We'll start off with the hole saw, one what works this time, and one with a sharp drill bit. It's a bit too small though, but that's probably a good thing. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's pinched a screw out of me hole saw. That's all right, we can wind this bolt in there and everything will be good. Actually, that works great. That drills at a brilliant size. That little palaver was all about making gaskets for that bit there. What's happening now is, <laughs> it was really slow, responsive throttle and it's really, really rich because I think these are putting quite a restriction on the exhaust at the moment, so it's struggling a bit. So at the moment, I'm remapping it and taking quite a bit of fuel out of it, see if I can get it to run a little bit better on initial startup. This is gonna be the hardest bit from now, is actually tuning this. Let's give it another go. Right, I've now got my boost hoses connected up. I need to make some proper metal pipes and stuff for this, but this is just a prototype, so until I know it works, I'm not gonna spend too much time with it. I don't have any air filters on it yet, but you don't really need them in the workshop. What's gonna go in there in this environment? Good. Feels very springy this. You just see just how small these turbos are, hey. When you're putting balloons on turbos, always make sure you use a zip tie. Right. Let's Let's try that again. Oh. I've shortened me HT leads, made some better brackets for these coils. I'm probably going to put my covers back on here again at some point. Oil pipes, yeah, they're going to need a dressing. But I should be able to tuck them out of the way when I go for the first ride. And my oil drain's all sorted out. So, it's ready to start it out with the boost pipes on. And I did manage to find a T-piece, so I don't have to use the Bunnings hose connector. So that's that then. Well, no, it's not that. What I've got to do next is I've got to remake the dump pipes um, so that I can tune it and ride it because it's pretty noisy like this. It's much quieter with the turbos on than without them, but it's still a problem with neighbors and stuff like that. And I need to get my O2 sensor for the FR gauge into the exhaust as well. So that will help me tune it like that. So in the next video, I'm going to be riding it and tuning it. And this is all learning for myself. It's a lesson for me, but I'm sharing my journey of learning all this with you to hopefully inspire you guys to have a go. This is something I've done my whole life. The best way I've found to learn is to just do it, is just to have a go. I'll let you into a little secret. I've been a high level mechanic. Well, I've been a mechanic for probably nearly 38 years now. And I got to a very high level as a diagnostic tech for VW, which is no easy task. I used to love the VW technology and doing all that. 
the problem with being a mechanic and a technician in dealerships is the actual dealership itself. But that's another story. But the secret is, I was never qualified. I went to college because I wanted to be a graphic designer and I got kicked out. And I went to work in a garage. And I went to night school to try and get me city and guilds in motor mechanics. But I, I had no idea when I was younger. I didn't have a clue. I was more interested in going out and getting pissed than I was going to college. So I dropped out of that, but just carried on working. But I was really good at, at what I did. I was a great mechanic. And I turned into a great technician. And because of this, Volkswagen asked me to come and work for them, which I did. But no one ever asked me for qualifications in my whole 38 years. Well, actually, one manager did. That was probably about 10 years ago. And it just so happened that I got my qualifications a few months before that through recognised prior learning. But I even managed to emigrate to Australia. I got sponsored as a mechanic with no qualifications. That's a little bit sketchy how I did that, but that's another story too. But what I'm saying is I've learned everything I've learned just by having a go. <laughs> I can say this now because I'm not in the motor trade anymore. I've actually got more qualifications in psychotherapy than I have <laughs> as being a mechanic. Well, that's not entirely true because I have got quite a few Volkswagen qualifications. Volkswagen have a really high level of training and it is a great product to work on. It's very technical, ahead of a lot of brands and you learn a lot from it. But working in dealerships and for brands, you are held back with what they'll let you do. So this is why doing all this, I'm learning a whole new angle on the things I know. Right, I'm running a little bit now, so I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna go. So next video, you're gonna see me riding this and whatever arises <laughs> from that. Oh, also, by the time you watch this video, merch might be available, so keep an eye out for that. I'm pretty sure <laughs> this is all gonna work, and even if it doesn't, it's gonna be a great learning experience and finding out what doesn't work. If it doesn't work, it's going to cost me a little bit more money because I'm going to have to buy another couple of these turbos so that we can have a quad turbo VW. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you reckon and if you've got any ideas for me. And I suppose that is that then. Have a great day. Oh, and watch another one of my videos. This one here.